The historic town of Jarradale sits amid the forest on the Darling Scarp, inland from the coastal city of Rockingham. The two towns have a linked past, as timber was cut in the areas around Jarradale and then sent by rail to be shipped overseas from Rockingham. Jarradale is popular with day trippers from the suburbs on the coastal plain, as there are a number of things to see and do in the area. One of the main attractions, Gurulong Park, was closed off to easy access and Langford Park is a mere shadow of its former self. But there are still some good bushwalks and good picnic sites at both Serpentine and Pipehead Dams. In the town itself there are a number of historic buildings including a church, timber mill manager's house and mill workers cottages. Sadly the cottages, despite being fenced off, have been badly damaged by vandals. In 1997 the town was added to the National Trust's list of classified heritage places. The local tavern is still a popular place to sit and enjoy the views over the bush on a lazy Sunday afternoon. The town dates back to 1872 and the granting of several timber concessions. The Jarradale Timber Company constructed a railway to move timber down to the coast at Rockingham. The first site selected for the town was a little east of the current location. A bushfire in 1895 destroyed most of the buildings and the town was moved to where it sits today. Originally a private town, it was finally gazetted in 1913. The town's name comes from the large stands of Jarrah that surround it. Milling in the area has a long history with various mills opening and closing. Some were destroyed by bushfires and rebuilt, and others were abandoned. Today, the Jarradale Heritage Park includes the old mill manager's residence, a reconstructed milling shed that's on the site of the old number one mill, and some ancillary storage buildings. In a small fenced off compound are the remains of the workers' cottages, which have been badly vandalised. The mill manager's cottage and number one mill building were offered for lease in 2019. An all-new electric mill was constructed in 1968. It operated until 1997. It was the 15th mill in the area and it was the last one to close. Timber milling had been part of the area for 125 years. In 1907 there was a major strike at the mills after workers conditions and wages were adversely affected by a ruling about the timber industry. A fighting fund was established and the enormous sum for the time of over £7,400 was raised. All the mills in the southwest except Carradale closed down. The strike started on March the 15th and continued until June the 17th. The workers had won a small victory in pay and conditions, but the loss of income had much longer term effects on the viability of some mills. Jarradale has relied on the timber industry for most of its income in the past, but today fruit and vegetables have been added to the local industry and bauxite mining began in the 1960s. There is an RV rest area available at Jarradale for vehicles that are fully self-contained. This means that vehicles must have cooking facilities, 
black and grey water tanks and not allow any wastewater to drop to the ground. There's a three night limit and dogs are allowed as long as they remain on a leash. There are some good walk trails with one going 11 kilometres to Serpentine Falls. A shorter walk to Kitty's Gorge is very pleasant, but all the walks are best done in the cooler months. Alcoa opened the first bauxite mine in 1963 and the ore was sent down to Quinana refinery to be turned into aluminium. When the number one mine site closed down the area was rehabilitated and became Langford Park. It was named after the first mine manager Jim Langford. Once there were nice grassed areas but when the lake dried up the grass died and the park became a shadow of its former self. Toilets, seats, barbecues, tables and shelters are still provided for public use. Today about 16% of the world's demand for aluminium is produced in Western Australia. Mining operations at Jarrodale closed in 1998 and were moved to the new Huntley site. Pipehead Dam is the smaller of two dams located on the Serpentine River. It opened in November 1957 and has been an important part of the metropolitan area's water supply system. The area near the dam has picnic facilities and toilets available. But there are times when access to the dam is restricted.
Nearby Serpentine Dam is a major source of water for Perth, but few people know that beneath the water lies the old settlement of Big Brook. This was a timber town that was once home to around a thousand people. Serpentine Dam opened in 1961 and still remains an important water source. There are attractive picnic and barbecue facilities available at both the upper and lower areas. The upper picnic site has views of the dam, while the lower one has pleasant grassed areas and plenty of shade. For those people who prefer a prepared meal indoors, there's also a restaurant available. Goorlong Park was once a very popular recreation reserve and campsite. When the park was absorbed into the Serpentine National Park, vehicle access was cut off, and the only way to access the area was by walking quite a distance down an increasingly rutted dirt road. At the time vehicle access was first closed off, the public were told it was temporary and was due to some dangerous trees in the pine plantation area. Over a decade later, the temporary closure has been revealed as a complete lie and access to the park for older or infirm people is now all but impossible. The closure of such a popular public space is little more than theft and is a disgraceful act that should be reversed. Infrastructure at the park includes toilets, tables, barbecues etc and all this has been left to rot as you can see clearly from our pictures. Gurulong was once the site of a flour mill, known as Bat's Mill, after Joseph Bat, who was the mill's builder. Millbrook Wines has cellar door sales and a restaurant, and is located in a very picturesque setting next to a man-made lake. The winery is part of Chestnut Farm and can trace its origins back to Joseph Batt who planted the first grapevines in 1865. The winery sells a number of different wines including Shiraz, Cabernet, Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. Cellador sales are available and a tasting room opens from Thursday to Monday between 10am and 5pm. There's also a restaurant with an a la carte food menu and some unusual features such as No Waste Monday. <laughs> 